Good morning, folks. We're starting by watching a destabilization of the northern plasma filament. Now, they're not only growing in size, but showing that whip action we saw last sunspot maximum, 2011 to 2015. This filament may have met its demise, but we've got more at spaceweathernews.com, and the last 24 hours on our star has the filament of concern for Earth riding behind the southern coronal hole. That's the dark line there, and it is an eruption threat for about the next two days. Eyes on it and the sunspot group on the north. The solar wind is calming now along with geomagnetic conditions, but the southern enhanced stream from that coronal hole is expected this weekend. Here's the geo color overlay with lightning for yesterday's severe weather maker. It's moving on tonight with slightly lower threats. Hearts are with these hit by its tornadoes. This is one of the weirdest places to have a larger quake. Don't see many six pointers in Algeria, widely felt in the region. Quick eye candy comes from a new look at not only the cyclones at Jupiter's polar region, but their mechanism for being so tightly packed in and yet never managing to merge or diverge. Eye candy continues here as we look in lower frequency bands at a seemingly boring region of space and find something was hiding in plain sight, a cosmic radio jellyfish. This was wholly invisible in higher wavelengths and its appearance before our eyes in the band shift is a nice metaphor for the dusty plasma they still can't see. Interesting story here about the chemical changes induced by lightning. Turns out, it can answer one of the phosphorus mysteries on Earth, something that all life here needs which sort of takes the phrase divine lightning or divine spark to a whole new level. Okay, some more eye candy here, but this is NASA's video. And I remember when they essentially took concepts from my 2013 Starwater series and made it into a 60 second commercial. Many of you were angry on our behalf, not me. When science opens doors, it's not hard to see what's coming down the line. That series wanted to impress two things upon everyone. First, that water is everywhere. Nothing about Earth's water is special. But also, we need to look on smaller bodies with the water trapped below the surface. If anyone remembers the story about how there is an equal weight of microbes inside the crust as there is life on the surface, it's sort of like that. And now the story today is from Sweary, and they're suggesting that those ocean worlds are indeed excellent, if not better, places to find that tiny life than Earth-like worlds. This is not only a nod to the spheres in our solar system, but our lone claim in the science world that TRAPPIST-1H is the most habitable. There is so much focus on the more Earth-like planets closer in in that stellar system, but they have water down the line. I don't love TRAPPIST's stellar flaring profile, and the life in the subsurface ocean on H would be shielded and at distance. It's my best pick for life in TRAPPIST-1. A quick follow-up on the Andromeda Halo story from last year was not an anomaly. They've looked elsewhere and it turns out indeed the missing baryons are in an extended plasma halo, right where the dark matter halo is supposed to be. And since it is co-rotating plasma, we've got the Hall and Zeeman effects and more to consider in addition to its gravity and that of the dust that's been hiding it. Plasma cosmology for the win. In one of the best nods yet to the planetary system feedback, We've got a look at dawn auroral storms on Jupiter and a tracing back of the ions to Io, its moon. This is important because it's the best moon to planet feedback example we have that demonstrates why the planets affect the sun as well. The planets are connected to and from the sun via the interplanetary magnetic field. So picture the planets and this invisible to our current technology effect on the sun. Up next. More scalability here, starting with their review of how they think active galactic nuclei feedback works, all triggered first by the interaction with gas. Those interactions are everything in space. In this binary, there is a 300-day interaction cycle to the variability. We have seen nova events go off as regularly as every Earth year before. In recurrent nova, the interactions are paramount to the chemistry of the nova shell and to the cycle timing. As helium mixing fractions increase, so does the cycle for recurrence. This is why some stars are rapidly recurrent nova, as often as every few years, and others take millions of years between making the classical nova nebulae forms. By the way, the Sun's version is a micronova. It never sterilizes the Earth, and it is right in the middle of the road with those cycle timings about 12,000 years. Learn more at our disaster playlist, found at our channel page, and at suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow.
right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.